Welcome to theCUBE's special program series, Women of the Cloud, brought to you by AWS. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Very pleased to welcome our next guest, Sherry Karen Bashji, Sales Director at AWS Startups. Sherry, welcome to the program. It's great to have you today. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Tell me a little bit about you, a little bit about your role at AWS Startups. Great, yes, um, I run the startup sales uh, in the US. Um, for AWS, I've joined AWS really early in the cloud uh, journey. Um, it was in 2013, so I'm almost 10 years there. Um, all um, in sales leadership. So I've been um, able to work with really amazing customers, um, mostly you know startups in the beginning, because those were our predominantly original customers. Um, and now obviously going to, um, the business has grown to you know, other enterprises and, and really have seen some great things in my 10 year journey. So you're almost a 10 year Amazonian. Congratulations on your Thank impending you. anniversary. Talk to me a little bit about your career path did you always know you wanted to be in tech? Did you get into tech from a different field? What does that look like? Yeah, um, yes, I was always uh, interested in technology. Um, I was an electrical engineer uh, in my undergrad, uh, and I pretty much uh, quickly realized I didn't want to write code <laughs> or you know design integrated circuits. Um, there really wasn't an internet back then. I think the engineering students had uh, emails, but we emailed each other. Nobody else had them. Um, and I just uh, uh, got into a program actually at Intel and it was uh, it was a technical sales program. And so they recruited folks, engineering students, put us through um, some rotations and various um, groups. And then we rolled out to the field and I became a sales, a technical salesperson. Got it. So you were a double E from the start, kind of always knew you wanted to be in tech. But then now as a sales leader, talk to me a little bit about that path and what are some of your recommendations for people that might be starting out in tech or interested and don't really know how to navigate their career? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think for me, I was a little bit of luck um, and timing and, you know, some intelligence of picking the right path. And I think uh, really just around your skill sets, right? And I had a technical background. I was a, um, a people person. Relationships and connections um, were something that were important to me. And really just uh, figuring out kind of how to match your skill sets to what you um, what you actually enjoy doing. Uh, you know, again, I wasn't looking for a career in sales leadership, but it was definitely something I quickly embraced. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed uh, developing people, uh, working with our customers um, to help them solve their challenges and various technology companies that work for it. And as far as navigating, I think having, um, I always tell people, do the best job you can in your current role and be looking at what you want next. Um, because I have a lot of people that come to me and say, I want to do this next. And I'm like, well, you have to really be doing excellent in what you're doing today so that you get to have supporters and allies um, to help sponsor you and other, other things. Absolutely. Mentors and sponsors are so critical. Often when I ask people this question, they talk about things like raise your hand, ask a question, let me pay attention to your point about the things that you're interested in and start navigating a pathway that way. But also the importance of having mentors, having sponsors who you can share your ideas with, share your dreams with is also something that I think is quite helpful for those that are navigating maybe early in their tech careers, or maybe they're midway through and there's a change they want to make that they just aren't aware of what else is out there. Yep, absolutely. And I think I've been really lucky to have some great allies um, and mentors that along the way. So you've had some great successes. I want to now kind of pivot to understanding some of the successes that you've had, where you've helped customers internally, externally solve problems where it's related to cloud? Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, so, you know, for 10 years, I've been doing that. Um, you know, early in my career, like I said, it was most of our customers were startups and it was really um, a great place to be because AWS at the time, very early, um, helped democratize uh, access to the cloud, right? And so there were these startups who didn't have a lot of capital or people. Um, and so it helped bring that flexibility and agility to startups um, that maybe, you know, most enterprises have the resources to do. Um, and, you know, and I, throughout my career, I've worked with really interesting um, companies. Um, right now, I've uh, just met with the CEO, um, uh, Jill Selfox at Panzera, who 
really um, uh, outlined, you know, why AWS is great and what what it's helped, how it had helped them achieve things. And it's really, um, her thing is that AWS is really helps them build and deploy at scale so that they're able to reach their customer, um, you know, more broadly. Um, and it really helps them with the backend functions like deploying products, um, you know, maintaining that security and these user controls um, that become part of the AWS solution so they don't have to uh, worry about it. Um, you know, I've had uh, interesting startups that are embracing machine learning um, in various ways, right? They, I had an autonomous vehicle startup that um, uses the advanced driving, uh, the assisted driving um, system to predict um, and, um, you know, whether it's, you know, changing lanes or helping, you know, automate those things. And they want to make sure that they they um, provide um, reliability to their car manufacturers. And there's many, many um, others, you know, in the healthcare industry that we've helped bring, really ultimately helping them deploy and so that they can innovate and bring market, um, bring products to market faster. That's what it's all about. Innovation, being able to bring products to market faster, being able to pivot quickly when change happens. I literally just today saw that interview that Jill did mm -hmm. from Penzera on AWS and the relationship there. I've got a number of friends who just starting their, their um, new jobs at Penzera. So it's so great to see just the tech ecosystem being so intertwined and interconnected. I love that so much. I, I want to understand now from your perspective, switching gears a bit, talking about diversity, thought diversity, diversity of, of people. What we you know, we talk about this, Sherry, so often in tech, DEI is it's a very uh, prominent topic of conversation, but there's still some challenges there. Talk to me about some of the things that you've seen with respect to diversity that, that are still challenges present. And what are some of your recommendations for organizations to employ to? get some of those challenges swept out of the way. Yeah, I mean, I was an engineer and, you know, <laughs> in the early 90s, an engineering student in the early 90s. So I was one of 10 uh, females in my, in my, um, in my school, uh, in my degree uh, area. So, you know, being underrepresented was nothing new. And I wish that we weren't here talking about that, um, right? It's like, it doesn't matter if I'm a female tech leader, I'm just a tech leader. but um, we're not quite there yet, right? And and I think maybe in the next um, generation can have that luxury and that we have to do, you know, make that investment and effort today so that we um, are helping the path. Now I tell people, uh, you know, you have to, um, it takes time, right? You can't just go and say, I'm going to hire a tech sales leader, right? You, and I, I started very early um, and developed my career there. So you have to invest and give yourself time to help develop, you know, uh, underrepresented folks. And ultimately, um, I think uh, you have to be intentional and you have to, um, you know, focus on, you know, maybe looking or having different criteria that maybe you haven't typically had to bring that diverse perspective. Because if you're always looking for the same thing, that's what you'll get. And so I encourage my leaders as they're hiring and recruiting to really, um, you know, look at um, one, developing, developing the pipeline of candidates, right, to bring on board, but also be be open to, you know, the profile or the skill sets and things that they're looking for. You hit on three things that, Sherry, in all the interviews for this series that I've done, I'm hearing consistently where it comes to diversity. It's it's the investment that organizations need to make. It's the intention that organizations and leaders need to have in finding that talent. And it's the, the ability to be open-minded to looking for different thoughts, different skills, maybe kind of going outside of the comfort zone to bring in diverse perspectives. So I love what you just said. It very much aligns with uh, all the female leaders that we've been talking to in terms of this is what's needed next to make diversity, to actually bring diversity to life throughout organizations and not just have it as a talking point on an agenda. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, and honestly, like I, my team is, I take pride in having a very diverse team. I have a very gender uh, diverse team. And I, I would say it was intentional, but sometimes it's not. <laughs> so um, no, that's true. Right. And sometimes it's, you know, people gravitate towards, you know, female leaders. So they want to come work for me, but also 
really it's just we have to create an environment where, where different people want to come in and feel like they ha- they can you know have a voice and contribute and grow um, you know in their career. Absolutely, people need to see what they can be, be able to feel that I'm going to be included in this conversation. I can raise my hand. I can ask a question. That's not a stupid question. It's probably a question that many other people in the room or on on the virtual meeting have as well. So that, that ability to, to bring that diversity and that inclusion into roles, whether it's, we're talking about AI, machine learning, cloud is so important and it really will impact the direction that we go in. So for example, impact the direction that cloud goes in, in terms of how cloud's going to evolve, how your role is going to evolve. What are some of the things that you see there in terms of the next steps in cloud and in your role? Yeah, I think um, really, you know, in my role and dealing with various customers, I think um, succeeding with data in today's world um, really requires um, taking an end-to-end view for organization today, people are drowning in their data and don't know how to make, use it to make decisions. And we are we are seeing an intersection of data and machine learning and analytics and databases. So um, I think we um, all have to get um, smart about it and um, you know help our customers um, you know work their way through this journey. It is a journey, and you know every company these days has to be a data company. They've got to be yeah. a tech company. They have to be a software company. However, you want to describe it, but data is gold to an organization. And I always think it's whether it's my grocery store <laughs> or a retailer or a manufacturer or um, a, an automotive company. They have to be able to to glean insights from data as quickly as possible to make business decisions that push their businesses forward. So that's one of the things that I love is that. Every company these days has to be a data company, but they have to have the right tools, the right people, the right processes in place to be able to extract that value so that they can jump ahead of their competition. Exactly. And it is a competitive need. Um, So um, I think that's, uh, that's our job. That's our next, uh, next big role is to help our, help our customers, um, you know, along that journey. Absolutely. And be successful. Last question for you is if you look back over the last three to five years, what are some of the biggest changes in tech, in the tech workforce that you've seen and in innovation and what excites you about the direction that we're going in? Yeah. um, You know, I meet with startup uh, founders and, you know, you read their backgrounds or you get to know them. And, you know, there was some engineering student at, you know, XYZ. And I was like, wow, if I were an engineer like five years ago, what could I have accomplished? Right. So I am seeing this evolution of, um, you know, things um, or problems that are uh, smart people are sol- solving, uh, whether it's machine learning, like you said, whether it's biosciences. And so, you know, I'm really seeing, um, things coming out of universities, like research things that are really coming um, to light and solving real world problems. So, um, so that's a big trend, right? When I, when I was, you know, when I, in the, you know, years ago, I know you couldn't do much with, you know, satellite or telecommunication like you can with some of the topics that are coming out of school now. Um, I'm also seeing um, investment in early talent. So, um, you know, companies that, you know, like you said, you you know you you're finding really um, great, uh, experienced, smart people. So um, you know, AWS, you know, on the sales and solution architect team, you know, we are investing in early early talent, in early career talent. So um, you know, and they're accomplishing great things. So uh, I'm seeing companies like AWS embrace that a lot more. I love that investing early in talent is. So going to be so beneficial to companies in every industry. I'm excited, as are you, to see what happens in the future with that. So much potential, so much potential. Sherry, thank you so much for joining me on the program today, talking about what your role is, what you're doing, how you've been helping organizations succeed with cloud, what you see coming down the road, and your recommendations for organizations to be more diverse. We so appreciate your time and your insights. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Excellent. For Sherry Karam Dashti, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's special program series, Women of the Cloud, brought to you by AWS. Thanks for watching.